Thanks very much here with Bruce Arians and Bruce, obviously, Ali Marpet. When did you find out and, and how does this affect your team moving forward? Oh, it affects us a bunch. Um, we fe- we kind of had a, a, an inkling, you know, knowing Ali. Um, it's still a shock when a, a guy, a 28th Pro Bowl player, all pro. But I'm really happy for him because it was a great decision for him. Uh, it affects us tremendously. You know, obviously, we lose a Pro Bowl player. We've got two other guys that are free agents. So we're trying to do everything we can to keep some continuity in our offensive line. Well, along those lines, Coach Ryan Jensen, one of those guys who's a free agent, and obviously you've built a heck of an offensive line. Does the strategy change at all when you know, okay, we might have thought Allie's out, now we know Allie's out. Do you yeah. allocate resources differently? Yeah, you do, because you, obviously we, we got money back we didn't want back. Yeah. We'd rather have the player. Right. But right. We, got, we got money we didn't have uh, to maybe definitely get Ryan, hopefully get uh, Cap and Stinney back. But really, back to the main story, what about the quarterback? Did you have an inkling that he was retiring? And now that he is retired, what is your plan going forward? Well, yeah, I thought I, I was one of the ones that no way. Because every day we talk how you feel. And he felt great. Obviously, he was playing fantastic. So I knew there was a chance. Um, then after talking to him, understanding why, and uh, family always wins. And uh, so, yeah, the just, just story going forward. There's no door number two this year. Those guys were all free agents a couple years ago. Philip Rivers, Tom, all those guys. For now, it's you got to have a trade partner. I mean, it's not like, hey, we want your guy. No, you don't. You're not getting him. So, right. you know, I'm very happy. We drafted Kyle Trask last year, and I really like this guy. Uh, obviously, Blaine Gabbert has been with me a long time. So if there are guys, I'm more than comfortable. When you, when you look at what Tom meant to that building in terms of not just the play, but what he meant to the building, can you even quantify how you replace that? Uh, yeah, I think it's easy because the guys saw it. They know now. The core of our football team, 20 guys, they know what he brought to a table and uh, and how he prepared and how he took care of himself. That that that, that bled over for a couple of years now, so that's not going away. The football player is going away. We're going to miss that. There's a lot of chatter and rumblings out there, Coach. If you got a call or a text in three weeks saying, hey, it's Tommy, I had a change of heart, would that – would that shock you? Would that surprise you? Is Would that be, seem impossible to you right now? It, it would shock me, but I'd say, come on back, baby. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> you find a way to make it work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, you, you mentioned some of the limitations in terms of this year's ability to just sign a guy as a quarterback versus some of the other mechanisms you have to go through. Uh, you're a quarterback guy. You're always looking at the draft. How intrigued are you? Because some people are saying, ah, oh, you know, these kids are getting pushed up the boards. They're not that great. Briscoe's one of them. Yes. Other guys saying, hey, they're starting quarterbacks in this draft. You just got to know how to find them. Uh, you, bet, you have to run a different style offense for some of them. Uh, but for us, I think Kenny, Kenny Pickett's a heck of a player. Mark Whipple did a great job. Good friend. Great coach. Coached him up. Uh, the rest of the guys are a little bit different. Each and every one of them is different. Could they come in and take over a franchise? I don't think you could win it all with them, you know. Um, like I said, we drafted Kyle number two last year. I feel real comfortable watching him, being with him for a year. He, he's, we drafted him because he fits the mold we like. He's 6'5", he stays in the pocket, he throws the ball extremely well. So, um, yeah, I think it's an interesting draft quarterback-wise, that's for sure, because athletes are kind of taking over the position. Oh, yeah. And uh, I'm a believer that you have to better throw it, not run it. Chris Godwin is an unrestricted free agent. I know you'd love to have him back. Uh, coming off the ACL, does it make it more complicated or does that make it easier for you guys? Uh, we know what he is, and, and I, I'm convinced he'll come back strong. And, uh, but he, he means a lot to what we do. And uh, So, yeah, he's a, he's a priority. He's a high pipe priority for us. I thought, Coach, you would have had to spend a lot of time this offseason re- reshuffling your staff because I thought you would have been poached from a couple of coordinators. Didn't happen. Um, and the league clearly still nowhere near where it wants to be in terms of diversity among the head coaching ranks. Uh, is it frustration? I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I know how much this means to you and how this has been a calling for you, yet the doors aren't opening. Yeah, it's very, very frustrating. I've been on those committees now for 10 years, and we've, we have made good changes, but the, it's not happening. And uh, there's, there was 32 jobs, 32 owners. Um, quality guys got hired. But I, something, something's got to change. I mean, Byron Leftwich, there's not a sharper offensive mind or a better leader of men out there than him. Todd Bowles has proven. Uh, those guys need to be head coaches soon. You don't have your quarterback, Tom Brady, anymore. You've retired before. Did you give any thought at all to 
walking away after last no, season? No, none, none whatsoever. I, I really enjoy the process of putting a team together and, and the challenge. Uh, you know, it was great two years, uh, the last two years. Uh, you know, more wins in the franchise history, but uh, it's not over. We got a we got a heck of a defense coming back and, and a bunch of good young offensive players. Uh, so I, I really enjoy this this time of year, going to the combine, getting ready for the draft, watching what happens in free agency, and then start building a team. Your conference it, it seems like an interesting time. Like you just in your division, we had Tom Brady there. We had Drew Brees and Sean Payton joined at the hip for a long time. Um, we we know Carolina is rebuilding. We know Atlanta is rebuilding, but. I think there's some people who say, oh, well, they lost Tom Brady. Uh, the sky's falling. But I don't get that sense from you at all. And the, the NFC does seem to me to be a little more wide open. You don't have that cadre of quarterbacks 25 and under who have already taken the league by storm in your conference like you do in the AFC. Yeah, I mean, it's totally different. Not the AFC is loaded with good young quarterbacks, that's for sure. And uh, But our division, I think, it's again, it's going to be up for drabs. Uh, New Orleans has always got a great defense. They'll do a good job. Dennis Allen, really happy for him to but. Matt Ryan is the only quarterback coming back, so I got to look at Atlanta being the, the one right now. All right, B.A., we got to let you go. Thanks for stopping by. Spend Appreciate it, guys. Thank, right. you. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, B.A. All right, back to you. Tommy, JLC, Pete, thank you. Good interview with Bruce Arians, who, uh, well, he's got a team to uh, piece together. Because that he likes to do it. So. <laughs> well, I hope he does because uh, he's got a lot of work to do along with that front office. Uh, a lot of free agents, but uh, most notably the retirement of Marpet and of Tom Brady. Chris Godwin, uh, you know, uh, the key piece for uh, free agency as well. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.